Hey, what's going on guys? This is Joseph and today I'm going to be doing a performance and spec review of the mid-2014 MacBook Pro with Retina display. This is the 15-inch model with a quad-core uh, i7 processor, 4 i7 processor, clocked at 2.5 gigahertz with turbo boost to up to, I believe, 3.1 gigahertz, an NVIDIA GeForce GT750M processor with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, and integrated Intel Iris Pro graphics. So, let's get started. The mid-2014 MacBook Pro is sporting a 1920x1200 capable Retina display, a full-size QWERTY keyboard, dual speakers, a multi-touch glass trackpad, and a 720p FaceTime HD camera. On the right side we see we have a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port for external displays, an SDXC card reader slot, and we also have the air intake for one of the fans in the dual fan cooling system. On the back of the computer, we have the same aluminum finish backing that has been on MacBook Pro since, I believe, 2007 or 8. On the left side, we have a MagSafe 2 power adapter, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, a second USB 3.0 port, and a headphone jack. We can see that this computer is beautiful. It is a 15-inch computer. It's a power hog, but it's great, and this thing is ridiculous ridiculously thin. I'm talking finger, the size of your finger, if you put it up against your computer, it's that thin. It's a very nice setup. The mid-2014 MacBook Pro carries some pretty impressive specs, such as a 2.5 GHz Intel Core i7 CPU, 16 GB of RAM, a NVIDIA GeForce GT750M processor with 2 GB of GDDR5 RAM, and there's also integrated Intel Iris Pro graphics. Now, I am currently running a beta software of OS X 10.10.4 Yosemite, and uh, it runs well. I, I haven't seen many major differences, to be honest with you, from 10.10.3, and I haven't really experienced any bugs with this system. Um, it runs well, and this computer has. Uh, good gaming performance. Now people who say that Macs can't game are uh, somewhat ignorant because they just don't consider the obvious uh, advantages you have of having an NVIDIA graphics card in a laptop and also a high resolution, not very high resolution, nowhere near 4K, but a reasonably high resolution display. If you have a reasonably high resolution display and a reasonably powerful graphics card, you are going to be able to get reasonable performance out of a machine. That is just common sense. Now, uh, this computer has a 512 gigabyte PCIe based flash storage module, which is lightning fast. I'm talking lightning fast. And I am going to do a live disk speed test for you guys using the Black Magic Disk Speed Test, no affiliation. And I am going to show you live how fast this PCIe based flash storage really is. And you can see there that write speeds are way above 500 megabytes a second, and read speeds are nearly 600 megabytes per second. Now you can see there, it's just a ridiculously fast system on a ridiculously fast card that's no bigger than a credit card and a half lengthwise, the, the module itself. And the screen is great, it's wonderful, you can't discern the pixel, pixels, <coughs> excuse me, uh, pixels. You can't discern the pixels unless you are right up on it looking at even then. The pixels are ridiculously tiny. The display is beautiful. I love watching videos on it. The sound quality is superb. These speakers have been majorly upgraded from the last generation of the MacBook. I'm talking major. And I also have 
this program called Boom 2. It is the new Boom, uh, no affiliation, and it runs amazing on these speakers. These speakers were great before, but now they're awesome. I can bring this computer to uh, hang out with my friends or go somewhere, and the music is wonderfully loud. It's great. Now, I also have Boot Camp installed on this computer. I have the uh, Windows 10 beta, and it it runs great, you know. It runs with all the, you know, bugs of Windows 10 beta, of course, but it runs awesome. The screen quality is great. Um, it's just a, a great device to run pretty much any OS on. Now, my experience with the HDMI port is that it runs well, but there is some odd structural integrity issues around the HDMI port aluminum casing. At least in my case, I'm not sure if this is just a defect in this particular device, but while using the HDMI port, uh, it has formed a slight bulge in the metal casing uh, it's not even visible via a camera. You can only tell when there's light reflecting off of it, and you can see a slight uh, incline and decline. And it's it's very subtle, but it's still noticeable. And I'm a, a perfectionist when it comes to my devices, and it's the kind of thing that, that drives me a little bit crazy. But it runs well. The cooling system is fantastic, although OS X does not have good parameters where that is concerned. I'm telling you guys now, all of you should download Max Fan Control right away. If you have this Mac, if you have any Mac, you should all download Max Fan Control because it will extend the life of your PC greatly. Some may say, well, if you run your fans at a maximum capacity for the entire life of your computer, what if your fan burns out? Okay, valid argument. But a fan only costs thirty dollars, as where if a CPU burns out, and since it's soldered to the motherboard in the case of an Apple computer, you're going to be in the hole for a thousand dollars or more. And I think thirty dollars, if it burns out, is a much more easy sacrifice than a thousand dollars. That's just my opinion. Um, and it also improves performance because it keeps everything nice and cool. So I see no downside to it. Um, I have only a 512 gigabyte uh, storage module, but it is perfectly adequate for some heavy programs that I have on here. I have Final Cut Pro, I have Logic Pro X. These are all programs that run with a high amount of data. But this is worth it this works with it and if necessary I have an external hard disk drive with USB 3.0 compatibility that I can hook up and that fixes the problem so if I were you I would not waste my money on the one terabyte model unless you absolutely need to have a lot of apps applications on your boot disk but I, I don't see why that would be uh, the case for most anyone, most average users, so I would recommend getting a 512 gigabyte model and then buying for an extra hundred dollars a, uh, I believe they're called Seagate Slim Drives. You can get a two terabyte Seagate Slim Drive with USB 3.0 compatibility for like a hundred bucks. Great value, great deal, and great performance. Uh, so this computer, that was a little bit of a rant there, sorry about that. Um, if you're still here, kudos, thanks for that. But this is a great computer, uh, all the apps run great, the resolution is fantastic. Now what I have actually done is I have disabled automatic graphics switching just because I hate it when it gets down to like 40%. And I open up Launchpad or, or some other animation and it's like choppy. I hate it. Intel Iris Pro integrated graphics apparently are not good. But um, I, I, I disabled that completely because I 
I would rather have high performance until it dies and then plug it back in rather than have it last a longer time but be a less quality experience for myself. I also have it set at a 1920 by 1200 resolution here and that runs very well, gives me a lot of screen real estate. And uh, just a great computer all in all. Aluminum unibody finish. I do open this computer every few months and give it a blast from an air duster and take a dry new like toothbrush, one of those cheap toothbrushes, and brush where the uh, where the dust is kind of like stubborn and then blow it again. And that keeps this thing from uh, from overheating, it keeps the temperature down. Um, and I have actually had overheating problems with this particular model. I had to return one of the Macs because it was overheating so much. And I got this back and this was overheating and I sent it in to a, a repair uh, shop and I got it back a few days later and they said there was nothing wrong with it and the overheating wasn't happening. And ever since the overheating wasn't happening, so I'm not quite sure about what was up with that. I know that I was running my fans at full capacity, but the bar up near the display, which I know on the motherboard, that's where the processors are located, was ridiculously hot. So, I don't know if they did something on the down low, or I, I don't know why they do that, but uh, worked fine. This computer is great, highly recommended. It is a little expensive, well, not a little expensive, it's very expensive. It's a $2,500 laptop, but if you have the money and you want to invest into a laptop for that $2,500 and you are looking for a Mac platform, I enjoy the Mac platform. I also enjoy Windows. That's why I have a dual boot system set up. But if you are looking for a high quality, high resolution just premium build quality computer notebook that has a great display especially if you like to watch movies this is definitely the computer to check out so thank you guys so much for watching this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it if it's helped you at all uh, give it a thumbs down if you absolutely hated it leave any comments or questions you might have in the comments section below and I look forward to making some more videos for you guys. Peace.